Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I wanted to recommend five movies that I've recently seen that I've really enjoyed and would highly recommend. So the first movie that I have to recommend came out in 2022 and I have already seen it three times and I just cannot get enough of it. It is just an absolute delight and it is Puss in Boots. I have not seen the previous Puss in Boots movies but I do greatly love Shrek like everyone else in my generation. So when the Puss in Boots movie came out I decided to see it with friends and we we were blown away by it. We were just amazed by the beautiful animation, the heartfelt story, and just how absolutely fun it is. Puss in Boots has the same type of energy as the Shrek movies where anyone of any age can get something out of it and find some enjoyment from the story it had to tell as well as the characters who are all really unique, who are all funny in their own way, and just so incredibly endearing. This is a movie that I can rewatch over and over again because I just find it to be be absolutely delightful. I love Puss in Boots and the journey that he goes on in this movie where he is on his last life because a cat has nine lives. So he is trying to get this magical wish that will grant any single dream that someone has and he is hoping to get more lives. But while he is doing that, he comes across old flames, he comes across new friends, some enemies along the way, and they are all trying to get this one wish to use for themselves. So it's kind of a race to the finish line for all these different characters who all have their own motivations and they're all inspired by different fairy tales and folklore. And what I really enjoy about this movie is that not only are we following Puss in Boots character arc, but we also follow the character development of all the side characters as well. They all have their own journey that they're going on. It's just a really well-rounded movie. The animation style is really beautiful. It is somewhat organic in the way that it really enhances texture that is perfect for fans of the Miles Morales Spider-Man movies because those movies have such a beautiful, really unique animation style and I do think that Puss in Boots was greatly inspired by that because the way that they just use texture and the way that they use color as well was so dynamic and so beautiful and Puss in Boots is definitely worth your time. If you're a fan of Shrek, I would highly recommend it and stick around for the end credit scene because boy oh boy, did it make me excited for its sequel because wow. In January, The Last of Us came out and in one of their episodes, they used a song called On the Nature of Daylight. And this is a beautiful classical piece that has been used in a lot of different movies. And for me, whenever I hear it, I think of Shutter Island and I tweeted about that and a bunch of other people said, for them, that song reminds them of the movie Arrival. So I thought to myself, let's watch that movie because I want to know why everyone is ranting and raving about it. And so many people highly recommend it to me and I'm not necessarily an alien movie fan, but I decided to give it a try and I couldn't stop thinking about it after I saw it. The movie Arrival follows a protagonist who is a linguist and she is recruited by the military when a bunch of different UFOs land on Earth and they are all stationed in different areas around the world in different continents. So the American military uses this linguist to try and communicate with the aliens to see why they landed on Earth, what they want from us, and just to try and figure out how to communicate in general. So they're hoping that this linguist, who is played by Amy Adams, can try and communicate with them and see what they truly want from us. I love the fact that this movie is really grand in its idea, but hones it in on a singular person who is just trying to find the humanity and the empathy that is needed to communicate with these people who we do not know, we don't know if we can trust them, we don't really know what they want, but we follow Amy Adams' character as she is daily trying to talk to these aliens and we see the progression that she makes and we see the relationships that she's developing with people on the military base and the motivations as to why she's doing this. It's a beautiful exploration of humanity, empathy, language, and just society in general because it showcases how certain countries are very hostile towards the aliens. They see them as 
a weapon and other people are trying to see these aliens as a beacon of hope contrasted with the military that is just very stressed out and they see these aliens as a weapon and it's just so beautifully contrasted to show both the good and the bad parts of humanity and how they can be melded together and how people can change their minds and others can risk their lives in order to try and save humanity. It's just a beautiful movie. So Arrival really blew me away and was not what I was expecting it to be in the best way possible. It's a movie that I can't stop thinking about. It's a movie I definitely want to read the script of because I think it would add a lot more context to the story. And if you have seen previous videos of mine in the past couple of months, you will know that I have read the Road because I wanted to read a book that reminded me of The Last of Us and then right after finishing The Road and sobbing, I decided to watch The Road, the book to movie adaptation. The Road stars Viggo Mortensen who is Aragorn in The Lord of the Rings and he plays a father and he has a son in the movie. The father and the son are walking along the road after a post-apocalyptic disaster has occurred and they have been surviving that for a while but they are now traveling down the road to try and get to the south of America to hopefully survive another winter because where they are currently is too cold, is too desolate for them to survive. It's a pretty straightforward story but I do think it's probably one of the best book to movie adaptations that I have ever seen especially because I just finished the book and then immediately watched the movie right after so the story was fresh in my mind. The attention to detail and the dialogue that they included in the movie were right out of the book and they just really kept the film's story true to the book itself and I think that that made it so much stronger as an adaptation and a story on its own because Cormac McCarthy created a perfect post-apocalyptic story examining a father and a son, humanity, society, and the will to survive. This movie is gray and bleak and was everything that I imagined in my mind when I was reading the book translated onto the screen in a way that kind of left me awestruck because I imagined scene for scene what I was seeing in the movie and it was just so cool to have like the same vision as the director who translated this book beautifully and he added a lot more depth to it because we are visually seeing these characters struggle and Vigo and Cody who plays the boy were just amazing they worked really well together and it was just such a beautiful heartbreaking story and right after the movie ended I just covered my face and sobbed and was like that was really good and it was just everything I wanted and more out of a book to movie adaptation. I want more directors to be true to the source material and they bring it to life in a way that will make readers feel awe-inspired but also really capture the attention of a new audience and I think that the director did that perfectly for The Road and it was just a fantastic adaptation so if you want anything that reminds you of The Last of Us definitely watch The Road. I do think it's definitely on the same level of sadness as The Last of Us, but I think this is just so much more desolate. There's less hope in the world in this movie compared to The Last of Us, and it's just a beautiful struggle to survive, but at what cost? The next movie I saw was actually the first movie for my digital film club. Yes, I created a digital film club. It takes place over on my Discord, which will be linked down below, and I try and keep it themed every single month. So the first month for the movie club, we voted on a movie to see that was a Best Picture nominee, specifically from 2018, because I felt like that group of movies were all very strong contenders for best picture. I felt like they all had their own unique stories to tell and they all really stood out to me compared to other years. So all the members in the club decided to vote on which movie to see and Phantom Thread won. So we met over on the Discord, we created a teleparty together and we watched the movie together live, shared our own reactions, and then afterwards we went into the Discord again and really discussed the movie. We broke down our favorite scenes, we broke down whether or not we really enjoyed it, and we had a great time with it. And Phantom Thread was a movie that also really took me by surprise. It was a movie that wasn't really on my radar when it was initially nominated in 2018. I didn't feel like it was a movie I truly cared about because I just thought it was a very slow historical fiction, but instead it was a twisted, toxic historical fiction that I ate up because 
I love Hannibal and Will Graham and I felt like this is a Hannibal and Will Graham coded movie. Perfect for people who love when the protagonist falls in love with the villain. So Phantom Thread follows Alma who is a very ordinary woman and she meets Reynolds Woodcock and he is a dressmaker and he just immediately falls in love with her and finds her to be his muse. So they begin to work together as dressmakers. Throughout the course of their relationship that has a pretty big age gap, they are slowly but surely becoming this toxic couple. They're all consumed by each other and it's a very big yet quiet battle between these two very strong personalities and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. This is probably one of the most twisted relationships that I've ever seen in a movie and I was eating it up because it was just so well done. The music was beautiful. The costumes were also incredibly gorgeous. The story itself just unfolded in a way that was slow moving but kept you on your toes, kept you wondering what was going to happen next. It was fantastic. It was such a great movie to start out my movie club because it really stirred up a lot of discussion, a lot of conversation, so if you want to join future movie club meetings, be sure to join my discord because we will vote on the movies there, we will discuss them there, and the meetings take place over on my discord. We meet once a month and I'm just really happy with it. I'm so happy that I started a movie club because I personally can't come into a book club because the moment you ask me to read a book by a certain time, I don't want to do it. But for movies, it's a two hour commitment. We get to watch it with a bunch of people. It's a community type of atmosphere. And it makes it so much more fun because people will share ideas and opinions that you didn't have and it really stirs a discussion and a conversation and that's what I wanted to do with films. So if you want to join my film club, it will be linked down below. The last movie that I have to recommend that I saw with my mom and she greatly enjoyed and I also equally enjoyed was Driveways. Driveways is directed by Andrew Ahn who actually directed Fire Island which a lot of people have seen, I haven't seen, but it's very different from Fire Island. Driveways follows a single mother named Kathy and she is going to a different state to clean up her late sister's house and she is bringing along her eight-year-old boy named Cody for the summer. So they go to this new neighborhood and are cleaning out Kathy's sister's house and throughout this journey Cody is pretty bored with the idea of it. He's eight years old, he doesn't care about cleaning up a house to eventually sell it, so he's wandering around the block that the house is on and he comes across the neighbor who is Dell. Dell is an older man who's very quiet and to himself, but he opens up his heart and his world to Cody and they form a very unlikely friendship that is just so beautiful, so pure, and reminds you that people young and old are so worthy of empathy and love and understanding and it's just a beautiful movie about the connection of the human spirit. It's a movie that is on par with Come On Come On in the way that we just explore relationships, we explore getting to know someone new and the unlikely likely friendships that we make along the way. It's a very cozy type of film in the way that not a lot happens, it's mostly just discussions from people who are getting to know one another, but it reminds you to just be kind to people, to give others the time of day, to strike up conversations, because you never know who you're gonna truly connect to and the impressions that they're going to leave on your life. And it's a beautiful, it's just a beautiful film, it's so heartfelt, it didn't make me cry but it did make my mom cry because she just really loved it and connected with it. I also think it would be really good for fans of This Is Us because that heartfelt type of story will be perfect because that's exactly what Driveways is. All these movies are great. I feel like there's something definitely for everyone across all different genres and yeah, let me know if you've seen any of these movies. Let me know if you have any recommendations because I would love to add more to my watch list. Maybe we can even add it to future themes for my movie club. Be sure to check out my Discord as well to join the movie club. And the Discord's not just a movie club. We have so many different chats. We chat about books, we chat about Marvel, Star Wars, music, cooking, so many different things on that discord. It's not just about the movie club. If there are any video ideas that you would like to see from me in the future regarding movies or TV shows, let me know down below. And if you want to follow me anywhere else like my Letterboxd or my Instagram where I post movie reviews or my TikTok where you will get a bunch of other content that you won't see here, 
all those will be linked down below and thank you so much for staying so long in this video if you have stayed this far leave a black heart emoji once again to match my outfit and if you have made it this far in the video thank you so much for all your support for liking for commenting for sharing and just being really kind in general and i will see you in another video very soon bye